Sit here. Oh, sit here. No, sit here. Jen is sick and is going to be zooming in. Oh. Oh, that's a prime example. You have an exhibit. I brought an exhibit. Okay, everybody, we are we yeah, are live. Yeah. Look at that. That's a breeder too. That's a disease that the lobsters get. Okay, we are opening this meeting. It's six oh three. We apologize for the slight delay. Um, I'd like to welcome Susan, our new commission Thank member. Thank you. Some of you, are, if anybody's watching in the audience, you may have seen her at the election day booth. 
Um, now, Jen is um, not feeling well, and she is staying home tonight and is going to zoom in if she feels well enough. And if she does feel well enough, we will see her up there. Okay. Okay. Good. She is here. Oh, she I'm is here. Her Excellent. I don't see her. It'll take a minute. Okay. Right, we'll wait till she gets up. The, the First, transporter has to bring her. I noticed when I was watching the select board meeting that you really do have to get very close to these things. So make sure when you speak that we do. Um, yeah, the transporter. She has not been beamed in yet. I think we can hear her when she turns off her mic. Okay. Well, well, the first is a vote, so we'll wait. What I thought we should do is, um, as I mentioned in the email, this agenda was written before we canceled the meeting or rescheduled the meeting with the Kenny Vaughan Conservation Commission last week. So we're not obviously going to have a recap of that meeting, but we can talk about anything that you guys have any questions about it or how, what we're going to talk about. And I, before I do, we do that, I think it would be fun to hear what everybody thought about the election day festivities in terms of what they heard from people. So I guess oh, Jen's on. Hey, Jen, how are you feeling? She, <laughs> she can't speak, but that's... She's to unmute herself. Okay. Sign I'm, I'm okay. All right. I'm not sure why the sound's not coming out there. Okay. We can hear it now. We can hear it. Yeah, can All right. Hear. So first order on the agenda is to vote to accept minutes from the October 17th meeting. Um, do I hear a motion? I move. You move. Second? I second. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Okay. All right. So let's just... Start. You want to, Susan? You want to start down at the end? Just talk about how yeah, what you sure. heard from folks and how uh, when we we gathered almost a hundred new signatures. We got a lot of signatures. Yep. Um, we were really busy in the morning hours. I don't know what the afternoon was like, but it was just steady the whole yep. time, um, and very few people walked through without stopping at the table, which I thought was great. I mean, I'm trying to make eye contact, but. Pretty much everybody who came through at least stopped to see what we had and what we were doing. And I felt there were very positive responses. We had a couple of offers of people to volunteer on various projects if we needed them. Um, yep. One thing that was interesting to me, um, the big poster that you brought, Carol, that sat up on the little easel, and it had the little lawns to lawns um, lobster. for lobster yeah, logo in it. And I'll bet at least a dozen people said, oh, I, you know, I remember, I recognize that, and I remember that, and I didn't realize at first that it was on there. Um, but overall, I thought we had a really positive response, and people seemed genuinely interested in what was going on and what we were doing. Good. Steve? Yeah, well, I, I had about the same opinion. There were a lot of people that stopped, and I was surprised at the level of interest. Yep. Positive things. And much more so than last year, although last year we were outside and it was a little more awkward than it was this year. So um, anyway, yeah. So I just to concur. I mean, we had, I've got to organize. We have several people who said they wanted to be part of things. So I just have to figure out this is a hard time of year for people to volunteer. Yeah. Um, but we are talking, <coughs> when we talk about the education, there will be a lot of planning to be done for that. So maybe we can pull some folks in on kind of a subcommittee, maybe, if they're interested. So. Okay. The other thing that you had also mentioned was just about everybody said they thought we were the Conservation Trust. Right. <laughs> now they'd say, oh, I contribute. I'm a member. Of, right. I, of you already the, have my, my, I'm like, no, no, yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> so I, one of the big positive things is just educating people. That right. There actually is a Conservation Commission in right. town. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I could get the trust to put, I mean, if we write it, put a little blurb in their newsletter going, you know, guess what? There is another conservation group in town, and here's who they are. So that might get folks to, you know, either that or we could ask them to change their name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Robin, thank you for setting up and taking down and all that. That was terrific. Um, I don't think I have anything to add. Do you have anything to add to that? 
Um, there was, I was from the 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Yep. group, so everybody was basically running to vote and running to get home and eat, eat. and feed their yeah. families, Yeah. Uh, understandably. So um, a lot of misconception that we are the Kenny Bunkport Conservation Land Trust, yep. um, that took a little bit of education. Yep. Um, and then many people, some signed up, even though they were running, uh, and many, many people picked up our information um, piece of work. So I think all in all, it was positive. Um, but I think that we still are not really known right. as the entity that we are. Yep. So we'll have to think about some more ways to, to do that. Yeah, thing exactly. is, I mean, the election, that was probably the biggest bunch of people that I've been able to see all year on any even on some of the other work on the the uh, Kenny Bunk River work we've been doing. Yeah. I mean, I think people just don't, it's hard for people to understand that there's so much going on and they don't pay attention because I even had, you know, I had the land trust, bro the uh, Kenny Bunk River brochure out there to give out the one in terms of getting folks to understand that that river is polluted and, and needs some help. And I had several people go, oh yeah, or not before they saw the brochure, they go, yeah, didn't you speak to the Rotary? I think I saw you guys at the Rotary. Um, no, no, that was this group. Oh, yeah, that was them. Uh, so it's like we're just all one big mush together. Right. So anyway. Okay, so next topic, if unless anybody has something more they want to add. Jen, are you there, and do you want to add anything? Okay. All right, so that's pretty unanimous that that was a big deal. So. Okay, so moving on to education and outreach, we have a meeting Monday night with the Kenny Bunk Conservation Commission, and I put together this handout that I gave you folks, which is really just kind of an upshot of what we're doing and then things that have come up from other groups that they're doing um, and possible areas of partnership with them. Um, just basically broader partnering with a group of people, um, the Planeteers, Healthy Rivers of Gunquit, um, possibly Biddeford Conservation Commission, although they're much more land-oriented, I think. Um, Wild Seeds is also another organization that's very highly respected that we may be able to somehow hook into. Part of what I was thinking about this was trying to get together a kind of a mailing list so that we could all publicize everybody's events to a broader audience. Um, and Jen, you sent that email earlier this week uh, from the Southern Maine Conservation something or other, which, and I had never heard of them. And they look like they're quite well established. Well, there's the Southern Maine Planeteers. No, but this was, is, yeah. But this, this was, um, her name is Julie and uh, McLeod or McLeod. And she is a landscape designer. She's working with Piper Shores, Piper Castles. I'm sorry, Piper Shores. I think is a. There, there are, there are. Yes, there's something we don't have to. Castles, who is an illustrator, and they're coming up. They both just have. They've been long-time um, conservation-minded people, individuals, and so they're they're coming up with a calendar of events from from everybody. So I think it would be well worth our while to to um, connect with them. And I do have her cell, and she took our information, and she's very interested, especially in the research that we've done. So. Okay. Yeah, I see I have her email here. So are you going to contact her or s so and follow up with her? or? Yeah, I can. I can, absolutely. I think it would, it would be a good um, idea for her to maybe even attend, let's just say, if possible, the, de the December meeting, because if she's putting together a calendar, I would presume it starts January, so we'd want to get, like, our speaker, or if we have someone in February, we'd like to, you know, at least have the opportunity to see what she's doing. Okay. So I can reach out to her. All right. And if she could come, if that works for you all. Yeah, and I think the, um, so the, the Kenny Bunk Land Trust is also doing forums, and... 
the, you know, the Planeteers are doing for them. So is she, is she a f familiar with them, do you know? Um, I don't. Okay. I don't. All right, well, it's fine with me if they, she invites her. Is that okay with everybody else? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So does anybody have any thoughts or questions on all the stuff on here? Anything that you think is, you know, just completely wacko? Um, just a, a question, having not been here, um, is this the first joint meeting with Kenny Bunk, or do you do this every year? No, this is a brand new first, initiative. First time. Okay. Yeah. Um, so one thing that I did want to talk about is that in the last meeting minutes, um, I sort of asked if anybody was interested in doing any work on, you know, some kind of a pledge that we could ask people to, to, do, to do, you know, that would kind of like the Lawns for Lobsters, but maybe different, something that would be a, pl a pledge to go organic or whatever. And, I, and uh, Susan volunteered to actually do some research on it. Do you want to, like, I know you haven't really gotten too far with it, but you want to talk no, about No, I haven't you? really done much writing. I've been trying to kind of educate myself a little bit about what's happened before and what some other communities have done. Um, and it is interesting because the lawns for lobsters, now called in other communities lawns to lobsters, yeah. um, sort of keeps coming up. But um, so I was trying to understand a little bit about what that program was intended to do, how widespread it was, and a little bit more about it. Um, and it seems that the um, marketing of it was good because people have pretty positive memories about it. Yeah. Um, when I read through the pledge itself, um, it starts out with no. It's like no pesticides. So it kind of starts out with a negative connotation a little bit, and there may be other ways, whether we use a similar format or something else, but to make the pledge more positive and more collaborative. Yep. Um, and the pledge, as written then, was just not terribly specific. You know, it talked about how you should water and how you should do other things, but it was... Um, fairly light, I thought, on information about pesticides themselves, you know, what they are, what the impacts are, how they're used, um, and what the alternatives might be. And I didn't think there was as much of that, and it may be just since that time we've learned a lot more, you know, I'm not sure. Um, but I think that the pledge could still come across as very positive, but maybe have really some more specific meat to it than it did in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so in going ahead to write maybe some draft things for all of you to look at, that's kind of what was in my head about coming up with some things that seemed a little more in keeping with some of the other things that we're trying to do, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Is there a, a length of this pledge? Wait, that Steve, you need to you need to oh, is there a length yeah, of the pledge? Um, is it, you know... Three sentences? Of well, it was kind of in paragraphs, and I think there were either seven or ten sort of recommendations or ideas for people to, to choose or to follow. And I think the format of that is fine. Um, I think you can kind of glaze people's eyeballs over if you have too many suggestions. Um, but, you know, two or three areas with a little bit more emphasis maybe than it. It just felt to me more general in the past, and I think... Um, people are better informed than maybe they were 10 years ago and that we could be more specific and less sort of light. Um, so is that something that people are interested in pursuing? Karen, what do you think? I think it's, it's well worth pursuing because we, I've read the, the pledge from before and it is quite negative and not very specific. So I think it needs to be changed. Okay. Well, I'd be happy to just come up with some very basic language and just mm -hmm. kind of send it around and get comments from folks if you're willing to read it. But it won't be long. I no. think we have to be careful it about it be just short. being too much. I think what people enjoyed about the particular lobster outreach was, you know, there were signs, there were stickers, and it sort of felt right. like you could be involved in a way um, right. by taking that pledge. And people remembered all of that. Right. Okay. Anything else, Steve? Robin? Okay. Okay. Um, budget. So we have spent to date 
$502.81, and that was for the membership of the, for the Maine Association of Conservation Commissions, um, the signs for the invasive demonstration project, so the first was 125, the signs were 88, um, we printed 300 handouts um, for a total of about $190, and then I'm going to prepay Tom Atwood for this February forum that he's promised to do just because we have um, enough money in the budget to do that. That leaves us with about, I think about 500 left. So we've only, and so what, what I'm hoping to do is purchase pesticide brochures um, from the pathway pesticide, the ones that we passed around at the earlier meeting, the one that we have that we're adding a uh, section on um, the effect on the water ecology to it. I heard today that we can get that updated with our wording for free. So it's just a question of getting it printed. And the only, the only thing I'm running into is that it's kind of an odd fold situation, not to get too technical, but instead of being a three fold, it's a four fold. And the printing company that I've used for other nonprofits doesn't offer that fold. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have to look around and see what else I can find out. Who's your printer? Vistaprint is like an online. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot of people use them. I work with them, too. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a good company. They're good. Yeah. They're good. They're inexpensive. They're fast. They're reliable. I use but, uh, Atlantic Coastal. They're very good. Uh, are they local here? Okay. Because I can, I can get a quote. Promoting a local business. Yes, I agree. And they're very good. Did you say Atlantic Coastal? coastal? Okay. Printing. Okay, that's a good. Why good can't thing. we fold them ourselves? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'm also on the shade tree committee, and we just came up with like a two or three hundred, and we sat there at a meeting afterwards and folded them ourselves in about I mean, fifteen minutes. I am thinking that if we have the budget for this, and it's a nice brochure, um, that we should. Buy, and, it, and if it was at Vistaprint, we'd be able to afford, for what we've got left, about 4,000 brochures. Wow. I don't want to fold 4,000. Well, that's, <laughs> wow. that's kind of where that's I was coming from. That's a, that's a lot of wine, guys. <laughs> we don't have that many <laughs> residents in town. Well, the point, my point was that we could probably get to town, potentially, to, to mail them to every resident at some point or do an insert you know, in, in something. That's why I thought that amount might make some sense. Hmm. So... But anyway, you keep them in your house. <laughs> yes, I have so much space in my house. I already have everything else in my house. But yes, we could, and we also could fold them on, a, you know, as needed basis to some extent too. So, mm -hmm. so I'll look into that. That's a good suggestion. I can barely staple things straight, though. So it's that not one of my good skill sets, folding. Okay. Um, all right. So next year, for next year's budget. Things that I don't have any really prices yet, but things that I had, we had talked about. I think we should continue the association membership. You know, I've used that website a few times. The other conservation commissions are pretty different from us, but I think it's still worth it. It also is a good thing to support. Um, the other three things on my list of stuff wait, that we... Wait, what, do you, what is this we're supporting? It's the membership, it's the main association of conservation commissions. Have you ever looked on their website? No. Okay. So I recommend that everybody on the commission takes a quick look. And if you think that it's not worth... What's it called? The Association, Maine Association of Conservation Commissions. So... $87. No, it's $125. For a town our size, it's $125 a year. I think we've been a member for a while as a town, but... So feedback on that before that decision gets made, I guess. The other three things on my list were testing, and Steve, was, we should talk about that for a few minutes, and then speaker fees and materials for plant workshops or um, planting workshops, rather. And also, if we do a pledge, we're going to want to put together printed materials for the pledge. Um, so I will need to, in the next month, get some sort of hard and fast numbers on that, all those things. Um, to present to the to the board, I think the deadline is like the 
I don't know, the first or the second week, second or third week in December. Okay. So. Jen wants to say something. Jen. Um, I'm sorry, I might have missed it. Um, did you did you say actual native plants to to um, take the place of the um, invasive species? Is that on our budget? That is not that is not on there yet. That's that is another thing that was going to be I was going to cover later, but let's cover it as part of now because because that's. That's on the that's on that's on the that's on the agenda to talk about what we're going to do with that section, and you know okay. Robin is here, so that's all good. And in discussion. Um, all right. So, you guys want to talk about testing or plants first? You're the chairman. All right. Let's talk about testing. Okay. One of the things that I agreed at the last meeting to look into was. Uh, water testing for pesticides so I have contacted a lot of groups including the in-town groups and found out for example that uh, the water uh, plant the treatment plant now does pesticide sampling mm. limited and the, the our our Kenny Bugport one yeah, very yeah. limited. Okay. And then the the Kennebunk, Kennebunkport Wells Water District, along with all the other testing that they do, that they report in their monthly piece, you know, newsletter that comes, mm -hmm. they have started doing pesticide testing for a whole range of pesticides. Only they do it, don't do it every time. And I spoke with the person there that's doing that. And then I contacted the Board of Pesticide Control, and they have had a few uh, pesticide water sampling efforts around the state over the pre several years previously, including at the Friends of Casco Bay worked with them. And they also did their own special study of the, what's called the 10 urban areas in Maine, including Biddeford. And so the person there, Mary Tomlinson on the Board of Pesticide Control, has a lab recommendation and also gave me the costs and contact information. <clears throat> and the uh, it's quite expensive because they test for uh, on the order of 200 different pesticides. So you take a, a sample in a, about a quart sized bottle, yep. you keep it refrigerated, send it out to this lab in Montana, and then you get back the results mm -hmm. of the concentrations of different, or detects or non-detects yep. on different yep. pesticides. So it's uh, on the order of $400 plus shipping costs for each test. And the people with the, on the Board of Pesticide Control recommended testing in uh, the water outflows, the stormwater outflows, where that, that's where, uh, you know, like, there's a drain along a road. Right. And then it goes out. Where are where where are those? Well, there's several in Goose Rocks Beach area. I know. Okay. That drain out into the marsh. There's one near my house. Is there one near your house? <clears throat> yeah. So. He said that's the the best place after a rain you do sampling there. Because so, of the runoff. Yeah. So we were. I was suggesting that just we we could have a, just take two or three or four initial samples depending on the budget we have, maybe yep. just one. And, uh, and then we can talk about future years with more sampling. Yep. And also the, the Beach Advisory Committee, we're discussing right. them possibly putting that on their agenda. Yeah, it sounds like Paul Hogan, who's chair of the Beach Advisory Committee, you know, and they have a much more substantial budget than we was interested in 
subsidizing that for us or working with us, be having that be one of their asks, which I think is would be great for obvious reasons. They have they have more access to money. They um, do often get what they ask for. So uh, we would obviously not do that year round, not winter of no, various it's, times. No, it's during the period that pesticides are being applied. So you would start do it next summer, say, like yeah. June, maybe June, July. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a one time like a like a snapshot test, right? Essentially. Yeah, they call it a grab sample. Okay. And that's the same way we do the water sampling for the Entercochai for the main healthy beaches. Okay. You just you just quick fill up. <laughs> you go out there with a quart container, dip it in. I do it at Lodholm Beach. Oh, do you do yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'll have to talk to you about doing it at Goose Rocks. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I thank you for that. That is huge. Um, good work. Does anybody have any pros, cons, anything they want to say about question. that? I just have a question. Um, yeah. Your own, what are you actually getting for the test? Are they yeah. testing for a certain range? Or are you asking question. for some specific things? Or how do they decide what they're going to give back to you? Well, uh, they uh, sample for roughly 200 different chemicals, basically, basically, which are pesticides. And they will then give you the, the data, whether it's detected or not and the concentrations if it's high enough for them. And sometimes it's just detect or non-detect. Detect. Mm -hmm. And the reason the Board of Pesticide Control recommends doing all of them, they, they say if you just send the sample there and say, here, test for one or two, it's all, it's about half as much as it costs to test for 200. Right. So you might as well. Oh. Test for the 200. Okay. I see. Thank you. So, I, I don't know that we need a vote on this to move ahead and talk about it, um, but is there anybody who has concerns with moving ahead and trying to get this done? No? I'd like to be sure that we have the funds for that, that we don't get into any kind of financial so if we, Bogmire. this would be part of our, if we paid for it out of the commission funds, it would be a request as part of the budget for next year. And so it would be itemized as that. And if it was approved, then it would be approved. Um, I think our first thing, though, would be to try to work with the Beach Advisory Committee because they have, through because of the lawsuit, they have a significant amount of money that they spend on various things for the beach welfare. Okay. And Paul believes that this would fit in that category. Excellent. So. Yeah, but there's a timing issue. You know, we could put it in our, uh, you know, a couple thousand dollars in our budget right away, couldn't we? But we still can't test it. I'll talk to Tom. Well, why don't, yeah, we, why don't you and I have a follow-up conversation with, yeah, with, with you, Paul you about the logistics? You aren't going to do logistics. the testing until next summer, but right. can, Thinking about their whole administrative process to get things. Yeah, I don't done. know. I don't know whether he says I asked, did ask him about that, and I think the process for them is that as opposed to us, where we we want this, 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 and this, and some of it or whatever will get approved right off the you know as part of the budget discussion though, which doesn't end until spring, I think, May, June. Um, they have sort of a ongoing, well kitty, to use the wrong word, but that you, they can just withdraw from, make a request at any time during the year. So it's a different process. I do have something to ask you, Steve, um, about the mud testing, because that seems... <clears throat> yeah. yeah, that you was know, interesting. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. I, I did ask that question, you know, you, I think Carol had brought it up and you just brought it up now, mm -hmm. so I asked the question to the lady, Mary Tomlinson at the board of pesticide control and she actually answered it it was this <coughs> afternoon oh. and she said she said no you can't take it and she darn it <laughs> it's a good idea I <laughs> thought so you know 
it's it common has to sense. Be wa water is water, right. and mud is mud, and never the twain shall meet. Right. So your okay. your sample and the goal is to have clear water. If it has junk in it, then that's okay. not good. And uh, and then the mud you would you can separately do, and they. She said they do have a cost for that. But all I ask for about is the. Water. Water Same from, company in Montana? I didn't get that far. I, did, I can forward you her response that just came before I left. So because the mud is more of a lobster, directly attributable to lobster problems, because the lobsters live in the mud, is that something we should follow well, up mean, on more? Oh. Right, so we have exhibit A here. I think so. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but... Okay. Uh, let me first find out a little bit more about that. Okay. Because she did recommend where to go and find out. Well, I can tell you the lobster people have asked them, are there spots you find this more often? And they say yes. So. Oh, that would be good information. And I don't know, like, there are ways to gather mud, I'm sure, from <laughs> yeah. depth. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, well, as... I am not the, I'm apparently not the mud expert. So As the board I... says, the, the mud is where it accumulates, and it'll just stay there. Because it doesn't get sluiced out, so to speak? It doesn't decay, chemically decay as fast. Okay. The thing is, we have to be careful. If we pick it from the middle of the ocean, we don't know where all of these pesticides, if there are any, are coming from. I don't know I how we can specify an, a region, an area where that is the um, cause. Well, I mean, you know, if it's close to shore. If it's in the marshes, I guess we were thinking. Well, the lobsters okay. don't live in the marsh. That's really. a good point. Thank there you. Right babies out, do. There's traps right out, you right. know, a few hundred feet. We, you could go off of the Cape Corpus Pier, you know, there's a lot of them out. Except I wouldn't really want to be right next to the pier because there's all other kinds of sources right there. Right. Um, well, why don't we start out with water, the water testing, because that seems pretty access available and not that unaffordable, and look, go more, do more research into seeing, you know, and if maybe we could get. Um, if we find three, two, three months from now that the mud does make more sense or as an additional test, BAC may be able to help us out with that because of the way their funding works. Wasn't it, Steve, that the, uh, the water, it's not as soluble, some of these pesticides in water, and they're more prevalent in mud? <clears throat> well, yeah, they aren't. Most of them are not sol as soluble in water. Right. So, so water is not going to be... A good water gauge. transports it, mm -hmm. right. but it doesn't. But the mud would hold it. it. Well, it would almost seem like, and, and I'm sure we'll find out more. But you know, the water you're getting a, a different look every time that you sample. Right. But with the mud, you know, the pesticide goes in there and it just stays in the mud. So it might not be something that we would have to test as frequently. Right. You know, maybe it would be something if, you know, depending on the cost, that if we could just do it, you know, once a year or every other year and get kind of a, a, a cycle of what that is. But if the, if the pesticide is there, it's going to stay there in the mud. It's not going anywhere. It could be done in the winter, the mud. Mm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Good point. Okay. Um, well, let's... Let's try to resolve something in the next few weeks because I have to decide if I'm going to put something in my budget. If Paul is all, all in on paying, it isn't as critical to mm -hmm. make a decision now. Um, okay. and, and, and let me just maybe, or maybe, suggestion, maybe we should just budget for three samples for next year and see if we can get it. Three water samples. And then BAC could do mud. It's a pretty low sample size. Well, that's, you recommended what? Three or four? Yeah, do you just to, to do it and yeah. see how many. You don't want to do just one because. Right. It, right. But probably four is enough to. 
We have different areas in town, too, that we need to yeah. sample, not just Goose Rocks Beach, not just... It's okay, Porpoise, certainly. You know, and um, then we could do Gooch's tree. Beach. This is occurring the most off Marshall Point. Hmm. This, hmm. according to well, the Lofton. That's not far from here. No, I mean, it isn't. from Goose Rocks Beach. It, no, it isn't. But still, it's a different. You know, it's a little. All right. It's a little different. And right off the point of Ocean Avenue, that's where that giant thing is. That giant house they put up. They're finding quite a few out there. Hmm. I haven't been out There's there. There's a lot of giant houses. I mean, like the monster house. That's the monster house. The monster house. house. <laughs> you can see it from space. As opposed one. to the big house, it's the monster <laughs> house. It's the monster house. Okay. <laughs> Go on. All right. I'm feeling a lack of consensus here, but I would like to move forward with something. Okay. Um, other thoughts? I say if we know where we want to test, we'll know the numbers of testing kits that we want. Okay. So we well, I, like I said, I would recommend just going uh, for like four tests in our budget, you know, two thousand dollars, and then parallel with that, have talk with the beach advisory committee and Paul Hogan and. But they will only do Goose Rocks Beach. Okay. Is the only we could use our money for somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. we could. You know. Say mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. I would like to know more about the mud. But let's, I mean, I'm going to have to probably give this budget in. I guess we're going to be able to uh, approve the budget at the next meeting. So meanwhile, we'll be sending around emails and interest on what we've learned, and I guess then we will make a decision at the next meeting. We'll have more of a recommendation. Well, I'll, I can call the Montana lab yeah. tomorrow. Okay, and find out if they do mud as well. Yeah. Okay. And I just saw in Yellowstone last night that they spray par paraquat on the ranch. Yeah. Nice. No, is, you know what I'm talking this about. Is this is a, 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 a. Oh. <laughs> it's certainly not uh, real. Well, real. They spray okay. Atrazine good. all over the state. No, this, just, is how, this is how I'm rumors. This is how rumors so start. <laughs> stars. <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> don't you watch Yellowstone? Not anymore. I don't have Paramount Plus. Sorry, oh, I can't yeah. watch it. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I just wanted to weigh in um, and say that I think that if we say four samples in our budget of water, um, I think we should take them in the same area, not do pot shot, just get a really good, with those four samples, get a really good understanding of what's in one region as a starting place. It's going to be the basis, the proof, if you will, for the education, the pesticide ordinance, etc. I also think what we should do is um, check out the mud. If, if there is a way that Goose Rocks Beach area has mud that can be tested, that is within, I can't, I can hardly hear you, Robin, so it's hard for me to Sorry. really respond um, to what you were saying, but I'm getting that you think mud is particularly important, especially the lobster people are all, you know, um, up in arms and gung ho about a whole lot of things. So if we can get them behind us, and perhaps have the Goose Rock Speech Advisory um, people pay for a, a mud test around Goose Rock Speech area, if that makes sense, that would be what I would um, what I suggest. Does that make any sense? It could be my my drums, my <laughs> my suited bed. <laughs> Well, I think I don't think that we can use one region and then uh, extrapolate it to every other part of Kennebunkport. You know, it's not a re uh, what I'm saying is we test in one spot mm -hmm. as evidence as the start. So you're it's saying that we think is most you know most prevalent. When you say testing in one spot, could I just get clarification on that? So you would say you would say we would find one location, one outflow area, and test that that multiple times over the summer, say, kind of like the way they do with the other testing, the E. coli testing. I'm I'm not sure. I would I would um, my thought was if we're, we're if we're thinking about outflows around, let's say I don't know wherever they might be take one or two in the same kind of area and test a couple of times in those one or two places. That still represents the same sort of area on the map, if you know what I'm saying. 
um, and that it's just a starting point. We'll have some data, but to do like four four samples in four different places, one sample in one place doesn't feel like it's robust enough mm -hmm. to be able to really stand on that data. Mm -hmm. So that was my thought is, you know, if it's one area, we take one or two outflows in that one area, take a couple of tests in each of those, that might give us a good understanding of what you call, Steve, the grant sample of an, of an, of an area. Okay, I would say that we should go away. The, those of us who are working on this can come back with a recommendation that we will for next meeting to vote on, and meanwhile we will circulate it beforehand so people can get a sense of how this is evolving. Does that work? I'd also like to say that we're looking for scientific data, not evidence. I, I want to keep this scientific and not as some kind of fuel towards what we may be trying to accomplish. I think we need still are in an information gathering mode. Yep. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. All right. All right. I think so. I can see that taking up a significant amount of our budget next time, but I think we definitely will need some money for speakers' fees, and we definitely will need some money for. I would like to set aside money for a pledge. I think that would be a good. Um, education effort. And I think that we're also going to get feedback next week when we meet with Kenny Bunk in order to, to know what they're doing and we may be able to piggyback on some things other folks are doing financially as well. So a work in progress. So thank you everybody. All right. Do you want to talk about, I have a, this on a separate agenda item, Robin, the Goose Rock Speech Invasive Project planning discussion. You want to do that before we move on to the um, Healthy Ecosystem Ordinance? Um, it's up to you. Yeah, I think we should do that and then end with the ordinance. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm not really clear on this project that we did uh, at the beach. Um, all this back and forth with Mel and yep. Paul and all that. Um, I'm just wondering, you know, like, I would like to see the lilacs come back. They do hold a tremendous amount of nectar. And so they're not, an, they're not something I would like to infringe upon mm -hmm. in that spot. And, um, for instance, the New England aster is quite invasive. Um, and I think because of the spot, you know, as a gardener, um, that's a main entrance. And so it really needs to look like a main entrance. That's my, I'm afraid that if we just start planting, like, you know, I'm not opposed to having a um, native garden at all uh, somewhere, but I think that would kind of uh, obscure the, the entrance in a way that we want to inspire people to uh, copy what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that you know, a lot of the invasive, I mean, a lot of the natives too, they, they are somewhat uh, later, like a lot of the perennials I saw on that list. I mean, so we need stuff, you know, the lilacs are good for early, so I really would hate to see them obscured. I think um, dune grass, which is a native, and the lilacs, which is, you know, it's almost native. I would like to see that fairly simple there. But, um, and I think there's places all over town where we could have um, the native gardens that would be more appropriate than the main entrance, but that's just my opinion. And I'm kind of attached to those lilacs because they used to be nice and they're coming back. Yep. So I can't see like putting a bunch of stuff in front of them except possibly, well, there's grass there now and doing grass, which I can get, you know, I did press right. that we out. Talked that, yep. So yep. I kind of feel like we, did that project, so um, there's plenty of bittersweet to pull out <laughs> for other areas. I mean, that's just kind of how I feel about it, but yep. it's not up to me. Well, right let's, let's give the native plants that we've opened up space for right. to flourish. Right. and Exactly, and take yep. care of them and keep the... It will be harder with a mixed garden in there because that bittersweet will not be dead in the spring. 
Yeah. It's going to take mm -hmm. a few years, and I don't see covering so, it with plastic at that entrance. It's a particular, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, that's the main entrance. I saw kids sitting there. I saw, you know, they've moved the bike rack, so it fits now. I mean, there's space there, so, you know, it was attractive when it was um, all lilacs. Mm -hmm. And they are coming back pretty good. And can I take the tags off them now? Because it looks, <laughs> yes. it looks a little ghetto over there now, so... so. Okay, we give you official permission to remove yes, the thank tags. Thank you. I didn't want remove to remove the tags. Go so to Conservation Commission jail. So, so yeah, so that would be. I, I mean, I think there's plenty of people doing this stuff around town that I think, you know, we should just keep that as, you know. Okay. Anybody else want to add to that? I just want to say that's not the entrance that I normally use when right. I go to the beach, but because I knew. Yeah. what had been going on. I left the beach that way yesterday or day before yesterday, yeah. and it really looks good. I mean, it it's just nice. a, it's a huge improvement. It used to be very nice with the lilacs. They, they will take over the whole thing. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, so I'd just like to give them a chance, because there wasn't much to them when, I, you know, some of them got yeah. twigs when I labeled them. <laughs> so, you know. Oh, Any other thoughts? I mean, I, I will say I agree. That, okay. that it looks nice the way it is. And, mm -hmm. and I think you're, the practical point in terms of the fact that it's going to continue to take some work to keep that down, and you can't start planting things there right. for quite a while. And again, we want to inspire the public, right. um, not confuse them, I think. Right. I mean, I think that there's got to be some other land in Goose Rocks Beach that they could use. Don't. I, I thought they had already been talking about in front of the tides in Somebody, I, I mentioned, somebody mentioned the ties in, and I th th thought it would be fun to encourage them to do that, for sure, because the plantings that they have there are, are nice, but they're not native. No, I, I thought they were talking about between the road and the beach, and the same beach, you know, where it's mm. a bunch of bittersweet. bittersweet and mm. Oh, I didn't know that. Would that work there? Pretty stressed. Be tough. No. Yeah, I mean, it, sweet grows nice. Well, yeah. that's why <laughs> doing grass would do it, but it gets choked out. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't I report back this conversation, the support of the commission, report that back to um, the beach advisory folks, and we'll have a conversation because we're happy to help with anything in terms of a native garden, but um, we just would prefer not to do it there. Right. Excellent. Moving along. Well, you know, we were talking about finding another spot We'd to remove the invasives, yeah. and you could put a native garden in that spot. That spot. So the only yeah. other spot we talked about, well, at least we looked at last year, was that place by, um, what is that, North Street? North Street? Over here. That one? No, yeah, North, North Street. Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, that was along the duck, the duck, I call it, call it the duck pond, but whatever that inlet is yeah. by the grist mill, the other side of the road. That's just huge. I mean, that's a big nut to crack. That's a, and it's all that steep area. It's got <coughs> riprap, some of it. I mean, it's. Yeah, and the, and the road is busy right next to you. Right. Yeah. I mean, we could section off, and part of it's private property too, right? Yeah. So. So we'd have to get permission from Which we probably could. It's a little shady in there, too. Yeah, it's true. So, I mean, a lot of these um, in the plant list that I read in our emails, they, they will not thrive in the shade anyway. Blue asters will, but not much. But they don't look that good either. So. Well, that's what I'm saying. That, you know, so okay. it would be better if it were sunny. They have more choices. I wonder if the town would like to make a recommendation. You know, they know where their town land is, right? Some of it. <laughs> I think that was a project project they were going to actually do, but I don't think they've gotten that far yet. So, should I go back and ask the town if there's an area they want to, you know, lend us and get and Mary Ellen could probably probably be willing to help. Yeah, they might have some ideas. That um, mm -hmm. it's worth a try. Okay. I think there 
there might be town land down by uh, Government Wharf. I mean, it should be a visible place. It can't be in the yes. middle of puck and brush. Nobody does. <laughs> the right of way by my house. Yeah, you, anything near the water, we have to go through that permitting. Right, exercise. which actually makes it an advantage for it not to be a shoreline. So with that, I think we should move along to, so I know, Steve, you've done some work on an ordinance. It's not ready to be brought out and discussed in detail yet, but maybe you should just tell us what direction you're going in and we can have a general discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, as we were talking about doing the water sampling, I have uh, been getting information from a lot of different sources, but one of the best sources was Curtis Bolin of the Casco Bay Estuarium Project, who's also on the main board of pesticide control. So he had some really useful information, and so I'm putting that together in some draft materials now. I like the way you singled out like four like of the worst chemicals. I thought that was pretty smart. Yeah. You know, because there's there's worse and worse. You know, atrazine's pretty bad. Right. Mike is my Right. Oh. So you didn't use that one. Actually during the when we had the table out there, a lot of people were, went by and were asking, and I was telling them about, you know, what we were doing, and there was a lot of good discussion for the public about that. Um, Process, I should say. So, in order for this process to be transparent, we will need to take whatever it is he comes up with and he wants to present to us and put it online before we have a public discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, maybe we could aim to get that happening by the December one. Okay. <clears throat> and a, another approach that I'm taking because. Uh, now, an ordinance itself has to follow very strict formal right. format, yeah. and they don't want a, a whole lot of words <laughs> and discussion and stuff in it. Right. I'm preparing a separate rationale document okay. that gives the background. So, like an education thing. And I think probably what I would recommend, given what we've been through with this in terms of the process is that we have a general discussion in December based on what we have and then we immediately take it to Warner uh, to have some feet and plan, plan ahead to have discussion on it because he's the one who would be helping it helping it to uh, be in a format that would be acceptable to the town. So he would be able to give us some good input. I mean, another idea we've been talking about forum speakers, yeah. and I think Curtis Bolin would be interested in participating, probably by Zoom. He has uh, <laughs> he got injured by a horse, so he isn't really going any place <laughs> for until he recovers his right foot use. Oh wow! Um, yeah, I was hoping. You're talking about like sort of an informal forum. I mean, what we? I'm just trying to think. So the forum that we have currently said is with Tom Atwood, um, who's a presser of col columnist gardener, mm -hmm. who um, has good rate a name recognition, and will be a good way to just talk about ways you can take care of a garden that doesn't require pesticides. Um, 
how could we fit Curtis into that? Because he, he, he talks a lot, that project, which is fantastic, talks a lot about you know, the effect on the bay of pesticides and so forth. And it's very much of a, it's not an, it doesn't give you alternative ideas on how to do things. So I think it would be really interesting. It's just a different approach than we had talked about. So I'm just putting that yeah. on I mean. Yeah, I think he's more of a generalist yeah. and really knows the field. So maybe we would, yeah. Is there, <clears throat> excuse me, is, you know, is it possible that, I know you talked about some of sort of the local sort of recognized and famous, if you will, getting, you know, celebrity speakers. Yeah. Could we have some kind of a panel where maybe his knowledge would fit into two or three other people, you know, being together and, and presenting, you know, their areas instead of one event that was just him? I'm trying to think of, you know, public interest and... Yeah, I, I mean, when the local folks that we talked about were people like from Franklin Farm and, and like or, Dan, you and know, or, yeah, Dan, maybe people who would be on the how-to format. You know, you're in your own garden. Here's what you can do voluntarily to. Yeah, I don't know. And he's more of a, I don't know, I don't want to say a scientist, but he's more into testing and effects and yeah. A lot of people resonate with that science-based. So I don't think we should just have... I'm not discounting it. I'm just trying right. to figure out how to... Right. Yeah, yeah I don't know whether it would be integrated. A, a forum, you know, requires, I think, a little more time. Yeah. Like, if we're thinking about just having it in, during an hour mm. or something, then if you get five people up there, it just... No, you don't You don't have time for it yeah, unless but, but you have it in a different have venue. A, a separate forum. Yeah. Does he have anything on the past site that, like, any kind of presentation that he's already done or anything like that? You know, did you notice? <coughs> I didn't ask him. I think it's a good idea. I mean, I think that he's. I. This is different. The Estuary and Society and the Friends of Casco Bay or something are he's, different. He's friends of Casco Bay. Right? No, Mike Doan oh, okay. is friends of Casco Bay. And he's the one who, you know, we knew had done, been involved in pesticide sampling in Casco Bay. But when I contacted him, he said, oh, you ought to talk to Mary Tomlinson. Oh, okay. Because really the, the state people did it all and we just sort of were there and <laughs> took the samples or something. So then Mary Tomlinson said, suggested the sampling location prices and everything and then said you know you really ought to get Curtis Bolin involved because he he has worked a lot with like organizing programs and sampling and planning yeah they do a huge amount of sampling up there but this was well, anyway this I, I, so I didn't the, mean to cut you off Steve I was There are a number of other, as I think I mentioned earlier, a number of other organizations who are having speakers forums, and 
some of that is going to be is going to come out and be discussed next Monday, and get pulled together after that to make sure that we're not competing with each other, and also that we can also publicize it through mul multiple organizations. So um, it's still a bit of an up in the air. The only one that we have for us is is Tom Atwell on the eighth of February, and he'll be talking about how to garden without using pesticides. In a very, you know, that's as far as we've gotten with that one. Is it at well or at wood? A at well. Do I have it wrong? Oh, okay. It's at well. I think we have down. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean that's a good way to look at it, Jen. Um, Curtis is well, well respected. So I'm certainly interested in, and it's not that easy to get people to speak either. So if you're interested and willing, I would certainly be looking to see if he could fit into a more scientific perspective. And also, I was actually hoping for these not to be on Zoom, or maybe to be on Zoom and in person, because I think networking is going to be an important part of this for us as an organization. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I was looking at Jen. Thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, if he can't get here, we could go get him, for heaven's sake. It's not like he's in Minnesota. Right? <laughs> so. All right, well, why don't, you follow, why don't we follow up with him and see if he's willing to speak and what he might be interested in speaking on, and we'll run it. If you can do that in the next week, we can run it by the whole group next Monday. Because I expect those folks to have some other ideas about forums and speakers mm -hmm. as well. So we can add this to the potential mix. I had an idea. Yeah. Um, maybe, you know, for Earth Day, maybe we could do, um, you know, like you could have multiple, almost like a, a fair type thing. Mm -hmm. So you could have multiple, um, you know, because February, a lot of people aren't going to drive out and go, you know, it's freezing, you know, plants aren't really speaking yet. So, but I was thinking, you know, the Trolley Museum, we used to have May Day back in the 70s, and that was fun. And the, the BOS um, did give a $40,000 waiver of permits to the Trolley Museum, um, so buses could park there, but Mr. Weston did say, well, maybe you could do something else for the community, like education, or, but I say we start fire that up again, because before, that, that was a pretty good event. A lot of people came, there was music, there was... What did they do? What was it? May Day Festival, festival. at the Trolley Museum. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, in the 70s, it was kind of wild, but then they brought it back. <laughs> kind of like the dump, <laughs> like the dump well, parade. It was really fun, especially when you were a kid. <laughs> that yeah, got wild, too. It was too. the dump parade, yeah. It oh, was that just got like wild. That. But, you know, that brought everybody together, and I think we, you know, it would be kind of nice um, just to have something like that in town. I mean, in April, you know, it could be dicey, but still, the 22nd of April is pretty late, and... That's before people really start gardening, so, um, good. you know what I mean? It's just a thought to do something like fun, like sitting in a forum, it's like woohoo, no, you know, know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe something, not not to say you wouldn't have people there that could speak about something, mm -hmm. but, um, okay. and that can involve all the towns, and it did before. I think I've only been there once. They have a fairly good sized building. Okay. They have a huge field that they, over over outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. I think that's the agenda. Does anybody have other stuff they want to cover? Um, I do, actually. Um, you, you wrote down broader partnering, mm -hmm. uh, work with applicators. Um, trying throughout the process to kind of get away from the us versus them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we're starting to collaborate in other ways, but inevitably, I think we need to hear or understand what, what's up there. I had an interesting conversation um, during the voting. Thank you for voting, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of, you know, what he does, uh, what Greg Searle does as an applicator. Mm -hmm. And he offered, and I will take him up on that, to go to his site and just look at 
what they do, how they, how their practices are. It's probably not the same as mainly grass or tick or whatnot, but I think I think we we have to stay away from the us versus them kind of scenario that we may be bringing across um, because there are two sides to every story. We just need to know how we can, you know, instead of uh, butting heads, perhaps we can help educate each other. Um, that's a good point. And remember, Carol, this winter when we had the, um, the Zoom call with Nancy Lightbody yes. from Falmouth, and she, she said she, they had worked closely with the applicators. They have a, <coughs> a relationship with them. You know, there's like three or four golf courses in Falmouth. There's quite yes. a few. It's a big part of their economy. Yes. So she's, and she, you know, she finessed that pretty yes. well. And so, mm -hmm. you know, that might be something to contact her about. Okay. Um, she was really nice too. Yeah, she's fantastic. So that might, you know, she may have some ideas how what they did. They, you know, right. And I'm sure the Searles would too. I would like to take you up on that invitation. Um, if other people want to come along, I think it would be educational. I won't bring golf clubs because I don't play golf, so that's not going to be an issue. But. <laughs> I might learn someday, but. No, I think that's good. And as you said, you know, it was on the list of things that I think we should, yes. we should do. Yes. So, okay. Um, I think we're all in agreement that that's, that's the ideal way to do it. So. So um, we don't actually have public, um, with my error, I forgot to put it on the agenda, but um, we can certainly open this up in public. So we you know, need to talk about it. Sure. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Bob Searle. I'm a, a, a resident Sorry, of I called you your father's name. Sorry. Yeah, it's all right. It happens all the time. My father's also a, a former golf course superintendent. He was superintendent at Cape Arundel for 30 years, so that's how I got in the business. But I am a commercial master applicator uh, licensed through the state, and um, I think I'm probably somewhat familiar to most of you, except for your new member here. Um, but it's nice to see you all in person. Um, and again, I would just offer myself as a resource. I'm glad to hear that we might be instituting some testing. I think that's a great thing um, to see what's out there. Um, and you know, other than that, I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to just be involved. So it's nice to you know be back in person. I hope to come to more of the meetings, and I'm interested to look at those lobsters too. But, yeah, uh, that's gnarly. Yeah. So thank you. Well, that's great. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So. Okay. That would be great. So I'll I'll give you a call or yeah. after I change it from Greg to Bob. <laughs> Tell say hello to your father, by the way, and your mother. Um, okay. Right. Okay. Anything else before we adjourn? Can I have a, I have a question? I lived in Hawaii for a while, and they killed the coral reefs, and they made all the golf horses go organic. Do you know anything about their methods? Um, oh, I'm not sure that that's 100% correct. I don't think they are 100% organic. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's why I was asking. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know, as I'm not intimate with their management. Yeah. Practices in in Hawaii, you know, I'm sure it's yeah. they're very conscientious based yeah. on their their region of what they're doing and stuff. But <laughs> yeah. um, it's a whole different growing environment out there. So right. you know, right. I, I just I can't. I just I can't thought speak you might that. know something about you know because they really what happened was the reef started to mm -hmm. die off because it's like cliffs and it just runs right into the water. So they got pretty strict about that. Yeah. Um, so I just thought you might know something of their methods, but I don't. Do you know, is there any, uh, is there a push for that at all in New England or? For ban for? For, you know, doing a more organic approach to golf courses. On golf courses? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. The golf courses have been just leaders in environmental stewardship. We, we employ organics, you know, frequently. There's not a lot of organic pesticide options. Right. Uh, but fertilizers and whatnot. Um, and, you know, we just developed the best management practices, which is a science-based 
document uh, for managing our, our lands in a in a you know in, with with environment or stewardship and in in, um, in mind. So we're always you know looking for new ways to to reduce our, our impact on the land. We want to work with the land, not on it, and um, and be a partner with it. So we're always looking to, to new research and 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 learning new things. So yeah. Uh, do you have a copy of those best management practices, or is it? Um yeah, there's a there's a we we do have a, a digital version. Yep, I can uh, I can forward you the link to that. Yep. Excellent. Yeah. I know. Second. Thank you.